All right, let's take a look here. I'm going to try to go ahead and make the Excel diversity calculating sheet. This is going to be awesome. Um, we've got diversity data right here. I'm going to share. All right, so what I've done with my insect, aquatic insect sheet is that you can see the original data is up here. This is where I broke it apart for the two different parts to make the rank abundance distribution. Now the rank abundance distributions I have copied into my homework already, my example. And now I'm gonna do the species diversity calculations here in Excel. Um, so the way I'm gonna do this is set up, I set up a little system over here that I'm hoping you can do for all of your data, trying to make things fast and easy for you, right? So what you can do is you can paste your new data in here, you can paste data and then you can pull the numbers out, you can paste data, pull the numbers out, and it'll be really quick for you once you've programmed everything the right way. So here I've got my species list. If you're interested, you got your abundance, which is more important. And then your P, your P squared, which you're gonna need. Um, actually, you don't need P squared in this particular thing. You need LNP. So uh, I'll make that correction now. And then P times LNP. And then you're gonna need the, uh, the actual value in here for the Shannon Wiener index, which I didn't actually put in here for you yet. Let's just put H prime right here. Okay, so those are then in turn gonna go into the answers in this column to all these variables that we need to do the diversity assignment. So I'm gonna begin by doing first uh, Cana Creek, which is here. Um, abundance, I'm gonna take out of this category here. So hopefully you labeled your data. So that is the Cana Creek data. And then I'm gonna put the abundance information right here and uh, I left a little space at the top there. If you want to paste in the species, you can, but you really don't have to. So just don't mix up your data, know what you're doing. What you need here is you need the sum of all the individuals, right? So this is going to be equal to the sum of everybody. So we can calculate their frequency is P, you know, not a new number for us. And so that's going to be called the total. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to put the total there. I want to be able to reuse this particular calculator a bunch of times. So I'm going to put the total down here at the bottom. I'm going to move this. I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put it at the bottom as equals sum. And I'm going to have it sum everything that I put in this column. All right. Um, that should give 10 rows. That should be enough. Okay. And then I'm going to highlight this whole section here. I'm just going to color it in. Oh, that's nice. So that's where I'm going to put, that's my hot seat to put the data in. All right. So a total number is 78. So P in this case then is going to be equal to whatever the number is in this cell divided by the bottom cell. But I'm going to have to dollar sign that bottom cell to keep the reference point from changing because I want the bottoms to stay the same. So then I've got P there and I can drag it down. I'm going to drag it all the way down. So you got a bunch of zeros in there and that way it'll be automatic in all my future plans. And then I'm gonna also calculate equals the LN of, let's see if we can do that of P, right? So that goes there and see how that goes. That looks great. And notice the LNs are all negative. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on with those numbers. My guess is they're undefined. So we'll just ignore them. And in this column, then I'm going to put equals to the P, I'm going to multiply the P times that, the LNP, it's going to go into that cell. I'm going to drag that down. I'm, I'm only going to do it for the top four. You could do it all the way down if you have a larger data set in the next case. Let's just try it. Yeah, because you will. So let's fill it all in there. So now what I need is the total. So this is, um, you know, going to be the total of those, which is the sum of everything in here. Now I'm only gonna sum in this case, I bet it won't sum those numbers, will it? Nope. So you're only gonna be able to sum the ones that you can see there, okay? So you're gonna have to sum those and that's negative 1.3. And then we know that the, um, the Shannon is the negative of the sum, right? So it equals uh, the negative, well, we'll put a negative sign of whatever's in that cell. 
So the correct answer is 1.3 is my Shannon index, okay? So I can then write that up here equals whatever's in this cell. That's my Shannon. And then to find S max, I know that I need to take the natural log of the number of species. I have four. So this is going to be equal to the ln of four. This is the maximum diversity. If they were all equal, I would have 1.38. Okay, so not a lot higher, but hard to say if that's a lot or a little. Um, true diversity, I have to exponentiate. So I'm actually going to do exp of h prime and see how that goes, 3.68. The evenness then is, um, so we need slightly, you can notice from that one, right, that we need less than three, than four species to get this number, but our, our species are pretty even. So this is gonna be a pretty high number. So this is evenness is gonna to equal to um, whatever our H is, divided by our potential H, really, which is this um, S max. How close are we to perfect? 94% of perfect is what I'd say. So it's looking pretty good. Um, the next thing I can do here is move on to the alpha H prime number one. So I have now a bunch of data to fill in on my chart in the example answer sheet, um, which I can do. Um, I can pull that up in a minute. You just put that into the sheet. I'll do that on my own probably. Now I'm gonna do alpha H prime. So what I need is the, the diversity at site one, which is actually going to be equal to, I'm going to type it in here, 1.3049. Oh, I'm going to try to get as many decimals as I can because sometimes it matters. So let's say do four decimals. And then now I have to recalculate this whole business with a new number. Okay. So you're done with that. What I would say next is that I can just replace the data. So I copy this stuff over put it into my Excel sheet. Let's see if I can just replace the data. Well, I have a few, another species, so I have a little bit of a problem for doing that. Well, there's some concerns, because I, I couldn't sum before all the numbers. So I only sum through J6, so now I have to make sure I sum through J7 because I didn't sum all the way down. The negative sum is fine. Um, I, so those are gonna be good. Those are gonna be good. Um, what's gonna happen with H prime is gonna be fine. It's just what was here. But remember, you did have to sum an extra species there. S max is now ln of S, but I haven't written S anywhere. So it's still the same number. In this case, S is five. So I need to change that number. So it's not natural log of four, it's natural log of five. Uh, the next one is exponentiate, whatever's here, that's gonna work fine. Um, evenness is gonna be fine. Notice how evenness has gone down a whole lot uh, in, the next, in the next one. And then here's my new H prime, I'm gonna type it in here, 1.0691, I'll round up, okay. So now I feel like I'm done. I have to do the gamma. So the gamma, I can go back and do the gamma. For the gamma, it's the pooled diversity, right? So for the pooled diversity, that's this, this set of numbers over here. That actually takes the same range because it has the same number of species as the second group, the Colorado group. So I'm just gonna replace them. Now you gotta be careful when you're doing this kind of shortcutting replacing stuff because you forget to add in the proper rows. But in this particular case, they should be the same as it was for the Colorado River. There's no new number of species. Because, you know, for example, um, S max is still the same. I don't know why I wrote S max. I think this is supposed to be H max. That feels better. Um, it's still the same because there's five species, all right? H prime has changed because the composition has changed. So this number, 1.339, is my gamma. So I need that number, 1.3393, okay? So we got those three numbers are done. We have all, we don't do the same evenness analysis for the whole pool, that's okay. Um, so now I guess if I wanna finish stuff up, I can just calculate beta directly, right? So I can take my beta diversity is equal to, it's gonna be my gamma diversity divided by 
alpha diversity of the average alpha. Oh dear, I need to average the alpha. The average of the alpha will be equal to the average of the alphas. So the average of those is 1.187. So beta diversity is equal to whatever the gamma diversity is divided by the average alpha diversity, 1.12. So that is my magic beta diversity number. That means that if the number were one, just flat one, that would mean that, uh, that these communities were essentially identical. If the number were two, that would mean the two separate communities. It suggests these communities are really pretty similar in a lot of ways, and there's not a lot of diversity difference between them. One uh, is more even than the other, but um, that's, what, that's what this tells us. So whoop d, got it. Now when you do the next analysis, remember you copy these numbers out, save them somewhere, another row if you want, and then just plug more numbers in here. You can, you can bring your new data in, it'll be, it'll be nice and quick. I just have to be careful about the number of rows and how you add things, okay? So. Oh, this seems to be having a good time finding the stop recording button. <laughs>